there. So glad you could come along. I put a spell on you. Grid is live. Initiate light cycle battle. Welcome, foolish mortals. For a safe trip, remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the cabin. Be sure to watch your children, and no smoking, please. Hey guys, welcome back to Pirates and Princesses. This is Tom. I'm here with Cam. Hello. Together, we're Cam and Tom. That's right. Uh, she Never is, forget it. She is the boss. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some Disney stuff in this podcast that's about Disney. Imagine that. Uh, yeah, so we got some good news and some bad news. The bad news I'm going to I'm gonna mention first, and then we're going to talk about some good stuff. The bad news is, is Disney ripping people off? That's, that's going to be the main point of this episode, yes. I think. We're going to talk about some instances, some recent uh, instances of Disney ripping off its customers. People complaining about it, that kind of thing. I mean, this has been going on for a while. The prices have been going up, but it seems like it's a little more... Uh, blatant now than it used to be. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, some stuff coming to the parks. We're going to talk about uh, Joe Rody Joe and some other things and the, the, the stupid like Peltz Rizzullo Disney the Disney fiasco. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that. So stick with us and we'll get to it. We'll get to it. So let's get into some good news first and then we'll talk about Disney ripping, ripping people off. Okay. So a couple things that are good news. One thing is they got Mr. and Mrs. Easter Bunny at the Magic Kingdom, and they're here for this week if you happen to be there um, for Easter. They're meeting people at the Bunny Lane Garden at the at the little Enchanted Glade Gazebo in Liberty Square. Bunny Lane Garden. Yeah. And they're going to be intermittent throughout the day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. through Easter on Sunday the 31st. And a lot of people are excited to meet them. That's one of the things people get excited about. So just letting you know if you happen to be in the parks and you happen to be in Magic Kingdom, you can find this pair over there. Not that I'm trying to rhyme. but um, I was going to say where there are two bunnies, there are often more bunnies usually but i don't think that this is disney so i don't think that'll be the case but they could they could like they could grow goo that they could have like the bunny lings and they could have like all kinds of different colored bunnies and they could all there you go like the bunny kids bunny you know? kids that's so bunny it, kid it's called bunch. that's called um zootopia and the hops family so yeah that's going on over at the magic kingdom i also want to remind people um this summer we have uh, there was ride testing going on at splash mountain which is going to be tiana's bio adventure imagineers are riding it now it's supposed to open up sometime this summer so if you're coming to disney parks this summer you can expect some point we don't have a date yet Tiana's Bayou Adventure to reopen. We know the H2O Glow Nights is coming back. We know that Communicore Hall and Plaza are opening on June 10th, along with a new Encanto show that's going to take place in the building because it's going to be used for festivals. And that's going to be a limited time event coming in June. Um, I'm trying to think what else is coming. We got the Country Bear Musical Jamboree coming back sometime this summer. April 5th, we're getting new Star Tours video movies into the ride. I'm trying to remember what else. There's a lot of things coming this summer. So yeah. this is a good time to go if you're interested in seeing some new things. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're not getting a like major, major ride. I mean, Tiana's, but that's a the reskin. Mm -hmm. you know? Basically, they're all reskins. Oh, they're going to be closing test track. Rumored to be closing test track down soon so they can start with that, with that refurb also. I so, am curious about that one. Oh, what are you curious about? No, I'm just I'm 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 curious to see how they're going to handle it. Like I actually, I'm very curious to see it too. It's weird because Disney doesn't seem to reskin its rides as often as they used to. So like it seems like they just did this version of Test Track, the well, Test Track. It's been a while because this years, is the third. This is the third reskin, or the, well, second it's second reskin, third variation of the ride. Yeah, because they had the crash test dummy version right. was the original. And then they had the people joke they call it Test Tron, which I actually yes. like quite a bit because it to me it feels like it belongs in future world. But it is kind of cool to see them go back to well, it's world not future emotion. world anymore. So that's why they're changing. Oh, whatever, it. whatever. But it's, yeah, yeah. it's so now they're doing one that's going to be inspired heavily by world emotion, supposedly. But we don't know what that entails yet, just that they said that's what they're going to do. They bring the serpent back. That would be kind of interesting. They it, might. It would freak me out. That thing always freaked me out. But I'm sure it's in storage somewhere. Well, that Epcot 1982, I think that's what it's called on Facebook. Go check it out. They're actually trying to rebuild it digitally. 
Epcot from ni- like 1982. And then some, they add some other stuff in it, too. Like, I think they're putting Wonders of Life and stuff in there, too, even though it didn't come till later. But one of the things they just did was they rebuilt um, World of Motion. And you could do a ride through of it so you could see what it was like. They have a video up they made. So check that out because that's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I know they, they keep a lot. They keep a lot of that stuff because I know I went to the One Media event uh, a couple of years ago and they had a lot of the original Figment animatronics and stuff there. They, so they still have it in storage. A lot of it's still in storage. They still haven't found Buzzy yet. I haven't found Buzzy, though. It's probably at the bottom of the lake. Oh. Um, also, people are excited about something, but it's not exactly what you think. It's not Buzzy? No, it's not Buzzy. Last year week we mentioned that they're making joe Rody a disney legend well then he put up an instagram post where he's returning into walt disney imagineering and this was put up i think today or yesterday and people were really excited about it they're like oh my gosh but he's coming back not exactly at this point in time What's going on is he's teaching a master class to Imagineers. So it said, beginning this week, Imagineers have an opportunity to participate in a series of master class work sessions led by Joe Rohde. Following in the footsteps of many former Imagineers, Joe continues to mentor and share his years of storytelling knowledge with current Imagineers, contributing to the future of creativity at Walt Disney Imagineering. People were hoping he was coming back. I hope they bring him back. Um, I could see them at least having him as, well, a couple things. So Pandora, they're talking that they're going to build it in Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And he was responsible for that in Disney World. Uh, Also, Disney World's Pandora has room for one more attraction, as I understand it. Okay. That might be something that they would bring him in to at least consult on. Pretty much anything to do with Animal Kingdom. Well, they're having that new area coming in to where the Dino Land USA area is. And there's road like permits and stuff being filed that lead into where Dinosaur is. So it could they I can see them bringing him back for that. I, Yet he still isn't fixed though. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I think that that is. I mean, if they're going to bring him back, I don't think he's going to be like you know overseeing everything. But I could totally see them bring him back just to be like, hey, we're going to reskin part of Animal Kingdom. It's going to be a pretty major overhaul. Could we at least get your input? What do you think? Because I mean, Animal Kingdom is very much his park. Mm-hmm. Like it is is very much. And the one thing that did not fit was Dino Land USA. No. Did not fit at all. Well, yeah, and the rides look like carnival rides and stuff. Yeah. They definitely shoved it in. But maybe. But right now, it's, he's just teaching a master class. So when you see everybody getting excited about it, don't get too excited yet. Don't nothing's get too gonna, excited. Nothing's been officially announced. As much as we'd like to see him come back, especially since they're going to add a new, play, new, new section onto, well, by repurposing a section of Animal Kingdom. Um, it makes sense that they would bring him back in. A lot of different Imagineers come back as consultants, things like that. But so far, nothing has been announced. Um, but given the feedback and how many people are excited, if I were Disney, I'd do what I could to get him back. But that's oh, just yeah. me. Um, I, I think that would go a long way with winning people. I, I'm waiting for that. Oh, hey, guys, if you keep Bob Iger and crew in for the Disney proxy battle, we're going to bring back Joe Rohde. Mm-hmm. So, you know. I could. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Well, speaking of the uh, the the proxy battle, let's 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 do you want to talk about that first? Or you want to talk about yeah? Let's talk about that first. And talk we'll about we'll talk about that, and because we'll, we're probably going to spend a lot of time talking about how Disney is ripping you off, but right. uh, uh, you know whether or not they continue to rip you off probably depends on the outcome of this proxy battle. Because if things do not change, my personal opinion is it will be business as usual, and they will continue to price gouge. Yeah, we're going to talk about the price gouging here in a minute. Do you want to talk about that first or second? We'll talk about that second. Let's talk about what's going on with the proxy war. Okay, Um, so the proxy war. Okay, again, we're coming up to the voting meeting. I think I want to say it's April 3rd. Um, Ahead of this, we've had people like George Lucas come out and Steve Jobs' wife and Abigail Disney and all these people come out and support Bob Iger. Well, the the issue is, and Pelts brought this up, is the fact that they keep saying – that he wants to oust Bob Iger. And he's making it, he's reiterating again, he does not want to oust Bob Iger. He's, that's not what's going on. They're trying to replace two board members, mm-hmm. but every time you hear anybody coming out and support, it's not supporting the Disney board, it's supporting Bob Iger specifically. And it's like, but that's not the person that's in danger of being got gone. Right. So ahead of that, Josh Gad just stepped in it because on Instagram, he put out this statement and as part of SAG after I'm probably the WGA, they were involved in strikes last year for months. A lot of people were put in financial hard 
ships and different bad mm-hmm. positions. They blame Iger for it because he and other studio heads could have done something sooner and didn't, according to them. So he puts this statement out and then promptly gets his butt kicked. Um, he said, what this man has done and continues to do for the Disney company is unprecedented since the days of Walt himself dreamed the impossible into life. Laying it on a little thick there, Josh. I am fortunate to have seen some of the plans Bob Iger and his incredible team have in store for the future. And that future could not be in better hands. But Bob Iger is not who they're talking about. Fellow shareholders, join me in supporting Bob Iger and his entire Disney team by voting for them today. Don't leave the magic to people who only understand it as dollars and cents. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's he's getting all kinds of blowback from people that were uh, apparently in the strike because Bob Iger, you know, was one of the most vocal opponents of the the strikes, sag yeah. after and the WGA. He got ratioed hard. Oh yeah, yeah. Like this one has almost like it has over nineteen hundred likes. He was one of the people at the forefront of letting actors starve and have their homes foreclosed on them instead of paying them what they deserve and treating them fairly. Mm. Um, what these actors and writers are asking for is not realistic. In quotes, Bob Iger talking mm-hmm. about the strikes. He did say that. Somebody talking about being a member of the, an employee of a Disney subsidiary. They got their team slashed in half. They don't have different basic things for health insurance. Um I like this one. I love the Disney brand so much, but I hate how everything is behind a paywall now or is crazy expensive and out of reach for regular customers and guests, especially in the parks. Disney feels a bit out of touch and cast members are still not paid enough. Agreed. Cast mm-hmm. members are still not paid enough. So there, it goes on and on, but there's a lot of people chiming in and none of it really seemed to support Josh that much. It was mostly like, what the heck are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, he's not the the first one to be kind of roped into supporting Bob Iger, which I guess we could talk about that. Like, it's it's very weird that um, Disney seems to be making it about keeping Bob Iger when that yes. was never the issue. Uh, it was never the issue. It was supposed to be that they were going to cut the two least qualified board members mm-hmm. and replace them with Nel- Nelson Peltz, who has a lot of business experience, and Jay Rosulo, who has decades of Disney experience. Or if you went Blackwell's Capital, they wanted three seats. Yeah. Ahead of this, too, uh, we didn't mention this, I don't think, on, on the podcast, Michael Eisner came out and backed Bob Iger. Now, Michael Eisner was replaced by Bob Iger back in the day. Yeah. And he's talking about, there was, there was a, for those who don't know, back in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, the company wasn't doing too well. No. Epcot, as you mentioned several times, almost bankrupted the Walt Disney Company. And in 1983, um, they had corporations coming in trying to take it over. Yes. So they brought in Eisner and Frank, uh, was it Wells? Yeah, Frank Wells. To, mm-hmm. to come in and to try to, to stop this. So Michael Eisner put up on Twitter that in 83, Disney was under attack by corporate raiders trying to take over the company that would have ended the Disney company as we know it, for the studio theme parks and hotels were suggested to be sold off. The board turned to me and Frank Wells, and a different story was written, one that was continued by Bob Iger and his executive team. Today, a similar situation exists, so let's remember the lessons from 40 years ago. Bringing in someone who doesn't have experience in the company or the industry to disrupt Bob and his eventual successors is playing not only with fire, but earthquakes and hurricanes as well. The company is now in excellent hands and Disney shareholders should vote for the Disney slate. Yeah, um, that's it's it's interesting to hear that come from Eisner because I think Iger is, Iger is a very different CEO than Eisner. And the fact that at least Eisner had some respect for the Disney company, what came before, and he had some creativity. And I I just, Iger is just a suit. He's just a suit. Eisner got ratioed as well. (laughs) One of the comments here, uh, in 1983, this is from Giant Freaking Robot, in 1983, Disney was still relevant, family-friendly product with a bright future. Now it's an evil tire fire on a rocket-trained ruin without any plan to fix it in sight. Disney deserves this fate. It has earned it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Disney is not Disney. I mean, you want to talk about a corporate raider. I think Bob Iger to me is a corporate raider because he just goes around and just buys up assets. And that's what he refers Mm -hmm. to him as, you know, assets and IP and just grafts them into the Walt Disney company, even if they don't fit, you know, and there's a lot of stuff they bought that doesn't fit. 
Yeah, there's a lot of people commenting like they're like, you know, I'd rather have Michael Eisner back. Oh, absolutely. People are here. The company's not in excellent hands. Disney lost billions at the box office. It's twelve billion in the hole with its streaming service. It's done virtually nothing with the seventy billion Fox acquisition. Its major IPs are either weakened or destroyed. Universal theme parks are a major threat, and the brand has never been less popular. How exactly is Iger doing a great job, Mike? <laughs> so it goes on. A lot of people are asking questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, which leads us to the Nelson Peltz thing. They put out a statement today because there's this idea that they keep wanting to replace Bob Iger, and mm. that's not what they're trying to no. do. Um, he said, Disney spends so much time and ink defending Mr. Iger while saying almost nothing about the two director candidates whose reelection try-in is challenging. It's both troubling and telling. This campaign is not about Mr. Iger, nor is it a referendum on his leadership, and in all events, Disney is and must be more than just one person, especially one whose contract expires in less than two short years. And the people who are, who's trying to replace is that um, Maria Elena, Lo, how do you say it, Lago Messino? Uh, Lago Messino, I think. And Michael yeah. Froman. Mm -hmm. And he, they keep saying that you can't put Jay Rizzullo and Nelson Peltz in because they don't have media experience. But when you look at the list of, of qualifications each board member has, the two they want to replace have the least uh, of different like different uh, skill sets they're looking for, and neither one have media, entertainment, technology, uh, or any of that stuff that they're complaining. So they are fine with these two people not having it. Yeah. But they don't want new people to come in who also have, the, have similar qualifications. That's, you know? Yeah, it's they, they are the least qualified. But so that, that raises a question. Why? Why is Disney so afraid to have someone who has decades of Disney experience, you know, come on the board? I, I mean, I would be like, oh, good. We have somebody that actually understands Disney come back on the Disney board. And then we have Nelson Peltz, which might be iffy about Nelson Peltz. But if he's just there to be just kind of an observer. But they're saying... They want to come in and basically hold the company accountable. Mm -hmm. And that that is going to be a problem because I think Bob Iger is a control freak. And there are some people suggesting that maybe because Jay Rizzullo especially was the CFO of Disney, that they might come in. They might start pulling at some threads about the financials of Disney and it might not go well for them. Yeah, we don't know. But th there is a narrative for sure. That seems to indicate that they're trying to remove Bob Iger. And and I don't, every time you hear someone talk about it, they keep turning to that. And I'm like, well, Bob Iger's not the one up for replacement. No. So I never understood that because I'm like, but that doesn't make any sense because they're not trying to – he's not the one up for replacement. He's going to be – he's going to be – have to find a successor and be out in a couple of years anyway. I don't think he's going to. I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think Bob Iger has any plans on going anywhere. I think he has to. He's his age alone. <sighs> he's going to die in that damn seat. He's going to be like, I ain't going anywhere, man. I'm going to, you're going to have to scrape my corpse out of this chair and to hold me out of here. I don't know if it's going to go that far, but I do. I think in his mind, he is Walt Disney. And yeah. in his mind, he's, he's more important to Disney than Walt Disney. And that's, that's not good. I mean, nobody, there, you could, everybody can be replaced in that company. The only person who can't be replaced is Walt Disney. I mean, he's dead, but you know what I mean, is Walt Disney. Yeah, You know, it's Disney, Walt Disney World, Walt Disney Entertainment, Walt Disney Studios, Walt Disney Corporation. It's, you know, he's only the only man that couldn't be replaced. Um, but here we are. And that's all leading up to this proxy war that's coming in like about a week. It'll be next week, I believe. Yeah, and they're really, I mean, they're really ramping it up. I mean, they're they calling, are. I mean, like Wednesday, Abigail I Disney and George Lucas and all these people that yeah, have Michael grievances. Michael Eisner. Michael Eisner, all these people that have axes to grind with Disney that they're actually calling in favors to try to, you know, show this like yeah. unified. Front. Yeah, because Michael Eisner was replaced by Bob Iger. Yeah. And he was ousted by Bob Iger. Yeah. And then um, it wasn't, I don't think Bob Iger's fault, but that's what happened. And then, you know, George Lucas was mad at Iger for kind of lying to him about Star Wars. Kind of, kind of lying. I know. Kind of lying. Yeah. Abigail Disney has done a whole movie dedicated to hating on Disney mm -hmm. and called her uncle Walt a fascist. Yes. Um, And complained about Bob Iger's pay often. And now she's like, oh, Bob Iger's the greatest. So it is a little weird. It's a little weird. And then along with all this stuff about, you know, oh, positive PR and all this stuff, they're also bringing up the affordable housing project again that Disney's working on. Um, 
It's housing initiative. This comes from the Pirates and Princess blog. The housing initiative would see 1,400 apartments be added to an area residents say is already congested. And the Orlando Sentinel, Orlando Sentinel is saying that it's making Disney bad neighbors. Oh, so it's like, where are these going to be like the, the most magical slums in the U.S.? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I know Universal is going to be doing affordable housing, yeah. too. But they're saying that the... They said Orange County's idea of affordable housing means one bedroom units would be on, would cost nine hundred a month. The Orlando Sentinel states the average apartment of the same size currently costs about fifteen hundred and fifty dollars a month. Um, they're saying they're doing it because the different theme parks and and businesses in the area can't get employees because they can't afford housing. Well, yeah. So rather than raise the raise the uh, minimum wage they pay them. They, they they just give them cheaper housing. This is kind of like, I mean, I, I get that to some degree, but I'm also like, this feels like the company store. This feels mm-hmm. like company town. This feels like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you go work for Disney or go work for Universal even, and then you, you're running off of them too. Well, that was kind of what Walt wanted to do. You know, being I was going to say that. that I was, mean, this is the most Disney thing ever. Yeah, he wanted to do that with Epcot. That was the original plan for Epcot was, yeah, our employees actually would live and work in this planned community, but they would also be kind of a tourist attraction so people could, like, watch them do their thing. Um, Imagineers had to tell him you can't you can't treat people like that. No, Walt. That's Apparently, that's, allegedly. People are not animatronics, Walt. That's yeah. not how that works. You know, and then yeah. you can't control them as much as you can the animatronics either. So that's starting up. I guess they're doing a voting meeting on it um, tomorrow, but it's going to be an 80-acre affordable housing project. And this is one of the ones Disney mentioned. It was funny, though, because they had mentioned it in passing and they hadn't said anything else about it. And then Universal said about them doing it and they were going to do groundbreaking or something. I forget what, but they mentioned it. And then all of a sudden, Disney's like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, it was right after, too, the whole situation where they lost the, the, you know, Reedy Creek and the whole thing was going on with the governor. And they're like, oh, just so you remember, we're doing affordable housing, too. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what's going on with it, but they're going to do a voting. But unfortunately, a lot of people aren't on board with it. They don't want to live near it. But it is what it is. And if Disney wants to do it, Disney will probably get their own way. Pretty much. Uh, pretty they said much. the $8 million impact fees associated with the construction would help the local schools. Well, here's the thing, though. What other money helps local schools and you know infrastructure and things like that are property taxes. Yeah. And Disney is notorious for every year fighting and challenging the property taxes and saying that they're being asked to pay too much. And they usually end up getting some kind of, you know, reduced amount from the courts. But you can pretty much count every year on the fact that we have to pay taxes as, as citizens of the United States and Disney's going to fight theirs. Um, that is true. It's like an annual thing. It's like, is it, is it, is it that time of year already? Because he's fighting property taxes. Um, I have one more thing, and then we're going to talk about robbing people. Okay. So uh, one other thing you might notice, if you're out on any of the app store type things like Apple or you know Google, I think um, Microsoft has them, you might look at the Disney Plus app, and it's going to look different. It's going to look teal. Why? Because it was blue and white before, and they're doing that Disney, that Disney Plus – this bundle with Hulu, Disney Plus with Hulu, yeah. they were doing the um, beta for. It's going to launch officially the end of this month. And Hulu's green and Disney Plus is blue, so they just made it teal. Um, <laughs> like yeah, you so just that's, merged the colors together. I think that's, and that's why. Yeah. Uh, it also stands out because now the other logos are that color. So it could be a couple of reasons. But you might notice that it's it's turned teal. It's not for any event. It's not for any particular reason. It's It's just they just changed it now. So don't be alarmed. Don't it is alarmed. what it is. Um, and I'll let you take it now into the Disney robbing people. <laughs> oh, okay. I get to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, yeah. So we got a couple of stories here um, from Inside the Magic, which definitely they had a heel turn, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They're, they're going all in on the Disney hate uh, lately. But uh, yeah, there was a TikTok video that was put out there. Um, this guy is the, the Blackberries on TikTok. Okay. And he put a uh, video out there talking about how expensive Disney World is, especially compared to Disneyland. And he said that they haven't even booked their flights yet. And his wife's already got them up to $13,000. Right. It was just for them to come their tickets and hotel. 
Yeah. And then he was saying it was like 10 grand for the hotel. I was like, where are you staying? Ah, uh, Polynesian, maybe you know, temporary or something. Or something yeah. Because it shouldn't cost. I mean, one, we don't know how long they're staying for either. I mean, no. if they're staying for like a week or whatever, you're talking a much more expensive stay. But I'm like, $10,000. Where you have to be staying in one of the deluxe hotels at that point. It shouldn't cost you ten thousand. Oh yeah, definitely. You're you're probably a sweet uh, deluxe or something. Because uh, I mean, that's like a thousand. If you're there for ten days, it's a thousand bucks a day. I'm like, where the heck are you staying? Well, I know that that would be a deluxe because I know when we stayed at uh, uh, Pop Century. No, we stayed at uh, Art of Animation, and we were in the uh, suites, and they were seven or eight hundred dollars a night. You know, so yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, it gets expensive. I mean, people don't realize like Disney World is not like Disneyland. Disneyland is more of a locals park. Now, I grew up going to Disneyland, but we would always stay with relatives. We would drive down to the OC and then we stay with relatives and we would just go over to Disneyland for a day or two or whatever. And back then it was like 25, 30 bucks a ticket to mm-hmm. get in. And uh, now it's like, yeah, over a hundred dollars just to get in the door, and then you get yeah, we're gonna talk about that in genie a plus, and then all the food, and yeah, I mean, I think they said the average cost of a Disney vacation for a family of four is, I forget where I read it, but it was it was between five and six thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and that's that's a, a very um, probably going to a value resort, a very kind of, I don't think know, that's even with the airfare budget. No, it doesn't include the airfare. That's a very budget conscious. Now I remember when we first started going and we took the kids when they were little, like we could go to Disney for a week for like $3,000. Maybe. I don't think it was even that much. It was like 2,500. Like $2, Cause we, we drove were, down, but still we drive down. We were, you know, pretty, um, budget conscious with the food, but you know, we had little kids, so they weren't going to eat a whole lot anyway. Uh, we stayed at a value resort, usually Pop Century. They loved Pop Century back then uh, when it was they fun. They still love Pop Century now. <laughs> when it was fun. Now it doesn't look very fun. Oh, yeah. The rooms aren't as fun. Well, they jacked the price of Pop Century up because of the Skyliner. Right. Honestly, I think I, I'm going to probably unpopular opinion. I think the Skyliner looks terrible. Yeah. I know our son brought it up, too. It, like, ruins the whole, like, Skyline. It, it kind of looks ugly. And it's, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And it's just – it's not – I don't think it's an uh, an improvement. I really, truly don't. Um, but he said, let me run down the expenses for y'all. Her mom says, be ready for about 10 grand for the hotel. But we're still looking for something a little cheaper. A little cheaper. Who the F are we staying with? We can't stay at a Motel 6 and live our best life. <laughs> um, and her mom is then like, I really didn't like the BMW. I really want the Range Rover this time. It's only about $1,092. So we can definitely get that for like a week, he continued. And then he said it was already amounting for this, the tickets for a family of four was over $1,500. That doesn't count GD plus or any of that stuff. Why are you using words like only when that is the price of rent? He asked. We haven't yeah. even looked at plane tickets yet because she wants to buy them a little closer out. But just so far, just for the tickets, hotel and rental car, we were at almost $13,000. Dollars now they're they're obviously spending more money than than most people are going to spend, but it's not unusual for I mean to to do a week long vacation, ten grand is yeah it's probably about right when you figure food and tickets and any upcharges and especially now with you know Genie Plus and all this other crap mm-hmm. and they always want to upsell like oh it's a once in a lifetime magical adventure you got to stay at the most expensive resort you know you want that Disney vacation you see in the commercials well you got to go stay at the Polynesian or well, at uh, you know the Contemporary or something for well, that they aren't even including food in that too and the food's going to get pricey depending on what the kids are and stuff like that yeah now there are ways that you can you can do it and do it relatively more affordably like if you don't want to stay in pop property which i i like to stay on property but if you don't want to stay on property you want to stay off property you can do that you can stay at one of the good neighbor hotels in disney springs and you can get in really nice rooms for much less money and they usually provide shuttle services and you can still get a lot of the amenities that you would have staying in park um That'll save you some money. If you went watch, they constantly have ticket deals and things like that. You can get gift cards from places like Sam's or Costco. And they don't give you a whole lot off for a gift card, like a few bucks. But if you're going to buy like, it's like for, for $100, you might knock $5 off. Well, if you buy like $1,000 in gift cards, that adds up, you know? Yeah. And if you buy like, you know, several thousand dollars, it might save a couple hundred bucks. I guess it doesn't, it's not a lot, but every little bit helps. Um, there's just different things you can watch for. If you use a Disney travel agent, you don't pay any more, but a lot of times if a new deal comes along, they can find you the best price, reschedule you, that kind of thing. Um, there are ways to make it more affordable. $10,000 for a hotel is insane. 
That, I'm sorry. Yeah, and they're not. I mean, the thing that gets me about the Disney hotels, right? You're paying even even a hotel like one of the moderate resorts. You pay where are they now? Like three, four hundred dollars a night, something like that. And <laughs> they're not cheap. And you can literally go to like any Hilton hotel, and for a fraction of the price, you get a much better experience, right? But you're you're staying on property at Disney, but a lot of the, the rooms. Uh, I mean, I know they do refurbs every once in a while, but I actually find them to be kind of dated. Um, mm-hmm. But then the re- the refurbs, they do don't make any dang sense. Like no. Pop Century, you know, we haven't been there since they did the new refurb, but it looks sterile. It yeah, like it went from really colorful. Yeah, I still hate the fact they don't hotel. give you blankets. Oh, I hate that. I think the reason they do that is so you don't jack up the air conditioning. But it's always so dang cold. Remember when they used to have the themed blankets? Mm-hmm. They used to have themed blankets and every hotel had their own blankets and it was really fun. And then they went from that to runners. Okay, we're cutting back. Now we're doing the runners. But it's still fun. You can tell what hotel you're at because of the runner. And now every hotel just has the white blankets. Yeah, it's 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 cold. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, there are lots of things you can do. You can even go down to Universal and stay. Their value resorts, you can get a whole suite there for about the same price as what you pay at some of the value resorts at Walt Disney World, and then you just drive back and forth. Now you have to pay for parking at the parks, but still, uh, there's a lot of options. Uh, it's just easier if you're on property, I think, sometimes to get around, especially if you're at a, a park that's a hotel that's close to a park you can walk. But the deluxe ones are that. Like if you want to stay um, in a contemporary and Polynesian, you can walk to the Magic Kingdom. If you stay at, you know, over on the boardwalk, at the Beach Club, Yacht Club, or the Boardwalk, you can walk to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I The one trip we had, it was about three years ago now, I guess, four. It was during the pandemic. We we stayed at the Contemporary for a couple of days, and then we went to Universal, and we stayed at the uh, Surfside. Mm-hmm. And they had just opened it not too long before that. We got a suite at the Surfside, and or maybe it was Dockside. One, one of those, Endless Summer. It was Surfside. And... It was like a hundred and maybe a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty dollars a night then, and it was a much nicer room. There was like two bedrooms in it. The contemporary. Oh, it was great. The contemporary was like a dump. Yeah, it was. It was very. That's why I said it was very dated. It was very like yeah, late. Yeah, they've 70s. updated it since then, but yeah. But this was the uh, the other building, not the not the main building, but like off to the side they have that that other building. But it was very kind of dingy, and it looked like a Holiday Inn from like nineteen seventy eight. I think. My favorite places to stay on property at Disney are – I like the Beach Club a yeah, lot. Yeah, Beach Club is and nice. And I really like um, Coronado Springs. Yes. We stayed, at the, we stayed at, I think, Caribbean Beach more any place. But um, Coronado Springs and the Beach Club I like quite a bit. Boardwalk's pretty cool, pretty cool too. Oh, Caribbean Beach, like I had a freaking soundtrack – it's like, oh, here's Blondie again. They're playing the... Yeah, pretty know. much. We were, um, they were starting to give us like all kinds of stuff for returning it so many times. Yeah. But yeah, yeah um, I like, I, I think I like Coronado because a lot of people, it's more corporate but it's it's calmer. And I think I like Beach Club because I love being able to walk to Epcot and then being able to walk over to Hollywood. Like I like just being able to walk back and forth. A lot of people don't want to walk and that's fine. But I just like that you could just walk to wherever you want to go. And walk between them if you want to. And it's nice. So, but um, back to the topic, which is Disney bring people off. So a couple of things that have come up the last couple of days, um, it's heading into Easter. It's very, very busy. Um, a couple of days ago on the 23rd, I don't know what it's been lately. I haven't checked, but Genie Plus ended up being like $39. Uh, that was like one of the top, it has been a high since like New Year's Eve. And it was 39 for Magic Kingdom or if you did the park, you know, multiple parks. But the prices are getting higher and higher for Genie Plus, and people are getting, you know, upset because a lot of people refuse to use Genie Plus. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you that if you are in line and you don't have a really good plan or you you didn't allot yourself a couple days per park, you're going to not ride as much. Yeah. I mean, because they're letting in so many Genie Plus people. Lines for Genie Plus are sometimes longer than the rides, the, lo- the standby line, but they get through faster. So the people in standby line, you're going to be there all day. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know. So we're talking a base ticket price that day of 159 to 179 dollars for one day pass. Yep. And then you're paying it was 39 dollars for An- or Magic Kingdom, uh, 35 for Hollywood Studios, 32 for Epcot, and then uh, 29 for Animal Kingdom for Genie Plus on top of your already ridiculously priced ticket. That that's insane per person. 
So basically, th this is the problem with Disney now. Like, you can't just pay and go and enjoy the day. You have to pay to get in the door. And then if you want to actually do anything, you have to pay extra. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like a freaking uh, video game with DLC. Like you can't or pay to win. Like you can't actually enjoy Disney World anymore unless you pay to win. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. And people are just getting a little bit um, upset about how much it's costing. That's why that person was making the video about it's not for poor people. Yeah. Um, because they're pricing out. A lot of people. Um, now, that grant too. They also said they were going to Christmas time. Christmas time, you're going to pay out the nose. It is insane. Yeah, that was like I, I didn't understand. And they're like, oh yeah, we didn't book our flights yet, and it's getting close to yeah. Christmas. I'm like, dude, you know what the tickets are going to cost if you wait? I mean, if, if you can even find yeah. a, a flight, what it's going to cost? I know. You? Well, yeah, the closer you get, the worse it's going to be. Yeah. Now, I, I mentioned on another video we did on our other channel. Um, that there are different things you can do to, you know, at the parks to make your trip a little bit easier so you don't have to pay for Genie Plus. One, definitely take advantage of, you know, rope drop in the morning and maybe go back to your room for a while, rest up, and then come back in the evening. Uh, people will, you know, have gone back after they've been there all day and then they won't come back at night. So yeah. you might have shorter wait times and shorter lines. It'll be cooler. Also, if you go when people are, are when there's a parades, if you want to ride a big ride, maybe get in line when there's a parade going on or a fireworks show or something because people will line the streets for that. And while they're busy watching those shows, you can get onto attractions mm -hmm. quicker. Rainy days are your friend. Yes. Some rides might shut down, but it chases people out. And my kids' favorite memories are all rainy days. Uh, my favorite memories are all rainy days. And we've got – because you get – it's so much more relaxed. It's mm. wet. But you're not, like, fighting people like you were before. And it cools it down. And it's just a, it's just a lot better experience. Were you going to say something? I was just thinking I'm waiting for Disney to offer, like, the, the moist Mickey dance party or something. The moist Mickey? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a rubber suit Mickey that comes out during the, the rain. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> It's bad. Um, uh, but those are things you can do so you can avoid Genie Plus. If you have a really good plan of attack for what you want to do for the parks, I've also told people a month or two out, longer if you have it, just start tracking the parks and the wait times at like different times throughout the day and, and document it. And you'll see a pattern of where people tend to go. Mm -hmm. And then you can just basically work opposite of where people are usually at and where it's busy, go in the opposite direction. That'll save you some time. Just do some things like that. It's a little extra work on your end, but then you don't have to pay for an extra $100, $200 a day for Genie Plus. Depending on how many people are in your party. Yeah. I mean, there, there are ways around it. And it's just, I, I think a lot of it is, you know, because of the expense of Disney, a lot of people only go once, maybe once in a lifetime or just a couple of times, you know, and if you don't go, you want to do everything. And it's realistically, it's not possible to do everything in one trip, especially no. if you have a large group. Not if you're yeah. only allowing one park per day. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, if you have like, you know, if I would say Magic Kingdom, if you can swing it a couple, a couple of days, Magic Kingdom, um, you can even get park hopper and then go between the parks and then see where people are at more on the day. Like they might be more the Magic Kingdom in the afternoon. So you go to a different park in the morning, you know what I mean? And try to see about that too. That might help you. It might be a little more money up front, but you might save money without the Genie Plus. So anyway, but back to ripping people off. So Another article that was on Inside the Magic, which take that for what you will, um, mm -hmm. they're complaining about something that I've heard complained about quite a bit, and that's over at Galaxy's Edge. They have the um, the, the lightsaber building, mm -hmm. the Salvi's workshop, and I've been hearing this complaint many, many times. They said people are talking about being ripped off because they're spending a lot of money to build these lightsabers, like $200, $250 for yeah. these lightsabers. And after you build them, you get them home, and they stop working. And I've heard this from many people. Well, yeah, because they want you to come back and build another one. Right, but they won't. Let, <laughs> they won't do anything to fix it. Like if it breaks, it's uh, too bad. Yeah, they got you your know? money. They don't care. Right? So people are talking about that. They said, you know, they're, they're complaining on TikTok. They, this one person said they had a video, and she said that her like, saber failed to ignite. So I'm glad I spent over 200 on this magical moment, and. They did get the saber back up and working while I was at the park, but sadly, once I got home, the saber never worked for me or the four people I went with. I think of the two, I think I think the droids are actually a better deal. I, dec I, I recommend the droids. Uh, the kids built droids, and that's one thing I will say that I, I don't regret spending. Now I think they're a lot more now than they were when Galaxy's Edge. Now. 
first opened, but they were like, I think they spent like a hundred bucks or something. But yeah, we just pulled it up on the, the Disney World site. They're 120 now. They were a hundred when we went, if I remember correctly. But um, that was fun because you got to you got to find the parts for them. Mm-hmm. And now if you want to, you know, do anything special with them, like make them talk or whatever, you had to buy, you know, beep more, you had to buy extra chips and stuff. But but no, they actually did play with those and they were playing them with them in the, the hotel rooms. And that that was something I, I didn't feel like we wasted money on. No, that one they got a lot of use out of. But the but lightsabers, I mean, you can add, you can go with the base price, right? And then go over to Doc Ondar's and spend a bunch more money to add, you know, upgrades. And people are complaining because they, they, they don't work. And I've heard this time and time and time again over the years. It's an ongoing issue. I'm on different Disney boards and there's always someone complaining about it, that they spent all this money, they spent upgrades, and then they got it home and it won't work at all. And it's like, why did I spend all this money? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Really, Galaxy's Edge is, I mean, just in general, my, my feeling on it is the whole thing is kind of a bust. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is. The food's not good. The theming is not original trilogy. Uh, it's it's sequel trilogy. No, and, it's original trilogy. They just call it a sequel trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just, for me, as as an old school Star Wars fan, it's a complete waste. I mean, I honestly, good. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with going to Hollywood studios, not even going to star Wars. Cause both yeah. of the rides I think are kind of like rise of the resistance is good. If you can get on it and it actually works. I love star Wars. I mean, I grew up with it. I used to sell the toys in college. They even named, I, I used to write letters to, to the authors. I even have a star Wars character named after me. It's a whole other story. Love star Wars. Always love star Wars. I will avoid galaxy's edge. Cause it doesn't seem very star Wars. to me, even though I will tell you, if you like star Wars at all, seen the millennium Falcon, you have to do at least once. Yeah. Ju- just, just, walking through it like the attraction itself the ride itself i think is very meh like i would have preferred something more like star tours but um you being able to walk through the falcon and they did get that right anyway you know that ride itself isn't great no the the experience of being in front of the falcon and part of being in it is actually pretty cool i recommend it at least once and the rise of the resistance i don't mind it but i like the better and everything worked and I really, really love like the first walkers. And there's, look, we, I think I mentioned that last week. And I really love walkers, and they have the walkers inside it and everything else, which I absolutely adore walkers and Ewoks. But you know, uh, yeah, you just want an Ewok attraction, like to sing and dance in. I, I just want, I love Ewoks. It's They're a so yub nub world, mm, like a I bunch of Ewoks. It's just a small of, world, but with the Ewoks. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 will, I think the Rise of the Resistance is a good attraction to ride once or twice. I think after you've ridden it the first time and the surprises are ruined, it's not as much fun. And we luckily rode it the first time when everything was working. Uh, when we were on the last time, the guns weren't working right. There was a bunch of stuff that wasn't moving like it should have. The animatronics keep breaking and they put screens in. Mm. Um, and it was like, eh, it was okay, but it wasn't as good as it was when it was working the whole way. Um, but I can, I can totally be content to not go to it. Yeah, I I just don't care. I mean, I did the one time. I'm like, yeah, it was okay, but it's basically just ratatouille with extra steps. Mm-hmm. You know, ratatouille it, with extra steps. Pretty yeah. much. And I remember, like, we went. Uh, it wasn't long after they opened Galaxy's Edge, and everybody was completely confused when the the uh, re- I'd say the Imperials, but whatever the First the, Order. The, yeah, the First Order. Yeah, they're all taking you to the prison cells and spoiler, and everybody's just like, oh, what do we do? Oh. We go out that way? Okay. Yeah, and, that uh, was cool the first time. That's what I'm saying. After the first time, whenever the surprises are ruined, unless you're going with somebody who hasn't seen it, it's kind of like, eh. It's it's just a very elaborate cue with a little bit of ride. Yeah, and they count the entire thing as the ride. And it's it's that's n- not accurate. That's that's like counting, you know, we go the Little Mermaid, which has a, a, a great cue. The Little Mermaid actually has one of the best cues, but the ride itself is really underwhelming. And, right. uh, you, know, you count the whole thing as the ride. Right. Like, oh, so, yeah, it's a three hour experience. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is some days. Oh, my gosh. So one day it was. That's, that If you want to know what Genie Plus is like, that the, when when it was Fast Pass Plus, we had one guy at the Little Mermaid and the line would not move. We couldn't figure out what was going on. Right. And every time anybody would enter the Fast Pass queue, even if they weren't, it was going to take a minute to get to the front, he stopped the entire line. To let to, so no one in the standby could go until the fast pass people got to the front of the line. Even though he could have loaded up 20, 30, 40 people easy before they even got to the front. Yep. And we call it Code Mermaid now in our Co- family. Code Mermaid. It's code yeah. Mermaid. And that's basically what Genie Plus is, from my understanding, because Fast Pass Plus used to have a set number 
of people, like if it was like 30 fast pass plus people for every, you know, 10 regular line guests, it's like 60 GD plus people for every 10 regular line guests now. It's really bad. But yeah, we waited in line once for like, it was like, it was two hours. And it turned out the reason we waited so long was because the, um, every time someone just got into the line, he'd hold the whole line up till they walked to the front, even if it took them two or three minutes. It was, it was terrible. <sighs> Code Mermaid. Code Mermaid. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I think we're going to wrap it up, guys. Yeah, so please subscribe to the podcast wherever you found it, whether it's uh, iTunes or Amazon or Spotify or wherever you listen to a podcast. Go out to piratesandprincesses.net. Uh, follow us on X and Facebook, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks again for listening. More news and videos are available on our website at www.piratesandprincesses.net, our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. If you like the show, please consider subscribing and leaving us a positive review on iTunes and other podcast platforms. This podcast is a production of Clownfish Studios, LLC, and WebReef Media, and we'll see you next time.